Good evening, all of you Dragon Soul fanatics and knowledge seekers. I am here today to have a little discussion about Guild War. We just started our week off with the Guild War, and we're going up against, you know, like a slightly smaller guild right now. Um, so, oh, there's only two towers left. Boy. Well, I, I will make my attack. I'll just do a little explanation, all right? Now, if you see here, there's the second line here. There is a Void Wyvern in that line. Now, one good thing to go up against Void Wyverns, you can use your Shaman. Or if you have the new hero, the second newest hero, D-Slayer, that will help counteract all that energy drain that Void Wyvern does. Because, I mean, well, for the most part, when you're going into the second round of Guild War, you're going to want to have your tunes nice and charged up so that way you can... You know, get all the whites off pretty good. Like, for example, if you're, you know, using Rev and Archer combo, you want Rev to get that off, so Archer hits a lot harder that way. Um, another one is when you're using the Dark Jakul combo with Hydra, you know, you want Dark Jakul to be able to hit it right away. You get those energy drainers in there, they're not going to be able to do it, and then you'll give... You know, like, let's say, Orc Monk there. You'll give him a chance to put up his shield to block physical damage. Storm Drake, once, once you know, Storm Drake, you know, damages any of, or, I mean, stuns with the Grease Lightning any of your tunes and then fires the white, it's most likely over for any of those that he, that he or she stuns. I think Storm Drake is supposed to be a fe female. Today's current Battlefield report, anyways, is Iron Armor. You heavy unit units have armor increased by 25%, and then your electric human or electric heroes are also increased by 25%. So, you know, when when you're setting up your defense, we'll we'll go look at my defense. All right, this is what I have set up. First line, there's no electric damage in there, but altogether the you know, DH, Bro, Bone, Rev, and Archer lines, they, they're pretty solid. You know, Bone Dragon will make sure that, you know, they have to bring a Medusa in, to, you know, if they want to use theirs. Bro and DH will lure out um, Elves, because Elf will drop all those shields. Um, Spiky does that too, but it's, you know, Elf will take out all shields at once, once you get his white going. Whereas Spikey will, you know, just get the heroes within range. Um, let's see. So, yeah, that's my line one. I usually have a good bro DH and bone line for my first line. Second line, I have my DOT team, damage over time team. Hydra's legendary is really, really great for those damage over time heroes. Because if you look at Hydra, let's scroll down, you know... That's 188% more damage, you know. That's a really great thing. Another one for toxic heroes would be Plague. Let's see if we can find him. He has the enhanced toxins. But that's not a percentage, though. That's only a base damage number. You basically gain an extra 85-80 for toxic damage. I mean, it's not much, but I mean, it still helps, you know. Anyways, back to the lines here. Now, Shaman, with this week's buff, is also not only a heavy tank unit, or a heavy unit, but he's also an electric damage dealer. So, you know, he will do a lot more electric damage. Uh, with the new updates that have came out with war changes, I haven't, you know, it doesn't really state whether, you know, it's on defense or whether it's on offense. Um, I don't really, I stick with my same teams when it comes to my offense, you know. Um, I'll go over that here in a little bit, but defense is a key factor if you want to be a high-ranking guild on your server. All right, so another one is idle to pair up with Hydra and Dracul to pair up with Hydra because if you look at Drax White, you know, that's 93,000 damage over 10 seconds. You increase that by 188%, you're doing almost 200,000. You know, and he's also healing himself during all that. So, I mean, 200,000 over the period of 10 seconds, that's about 20,000 20, per 
proc, we'll call it. We'll call it a proc every time that, that procs over that 10 seconds or per second. I guess we can call it per second. Yeah, so 20K, and if, you know, like I've stated before in one of my videos, a lot of these heroes don't really have a lot of health. You know, you look at her health. She's got, what, 60, 60K health, so in three seconds she's dead. That's basically, you know, like that. All right, so that's that's what I set up as my, you know, my DOT line. And with Shaman there, that will increase that by a lot more with, you know, that he has 25% extra. Plant, I'll throw in there with the Shaman line usually because, you know, when you have a Void line against a plant, she's still getting that energy boost on top of the, all the energy that she's getting from her skills. All right, and then Shaman, you know, he's dealing 23,000 magic damage every second for eight seconds. I mean, you multiply it by nearly 2,000, it's doing 40,000. It's a lot more, but he has more than that. He has this, you know, it'll also stun the foes too, and that's an electric damage trait. Your static charge, that is also an electric static, or an electric damage trait. And this is also getting rid of their movement speed and their attack speed for four seconds. Um, that's just an energy gain, a very important factor. And your basic attack is also doing magic damage and ele or electric damage. So, you know, you're increasing those by 25%. And then for every DOT attack, you're increasing that by another 100%. All right. Plant. It's good to have her with the shaman line. Because. Where is she at? There she is. You know, she's getting all that energy. And plus, she's gaining 150 energy every time they use an active skill. She's also, you know, an ally dies, she gets energy. So it really helps her get her defensive stance, her soul guard down, if you can see there. And, you know, that way, you know, you can block all damage, all stuns, almost everything. I think that your hero can still, the one she's protecting and her, can also still get possessed by Spectral. Um... I'm not too sure. I haven't ran a test on that, and I haven't heard anything about that, but I believe so. All right, so Lion 3. Lion 3 contains my Dragon Slayer, my Ninja, my Dust, my Storm, and then my Void. All right, usually when I run a defense, I like to... I normally try to include a Dragon Slayer, a Void, and a Bone in each of the lines. You know, so that splits it up. Dragon Slayer, as I said before, she will block all that energy drain, which is very, very helpful. And then a Bone Dragon and a Void in two separate lines will also make it harder. You know, when you're going to attack, you think Bone Line, many guild guildies will tell you, or if you already know yourself, Bone Dragon or Medusa was a good counter against Bone Dragon because of her energy overcharge. But since, you know, Bones drained and all that energy on line one and they brought their Medusa, now you get to line three and, well, what do I do now? Because I already used my Medusa. When they come into the next battle, with the way my Void is ruined, which is mostly expertise and necrotic damage, uh, when the way Void is ruined, it'll drain a lot, heavy, a lot more energy so they can't come out and fire their whites right away. So... A good counter against Void if you are attacking, though, would be a Shaman or a Dragon Slayer. Um, I put Dragon Slayer in my line because I want my Storm Drake to, you know, white as fast as she can. And also, Storm Drake is another hero that will work alongside Dust to do that extra damage. At 08, Storm Drake will, with her Tornado Alley, is 40,000 damage. Well, with that electric boost, you're adding an extra 25%, so now it's up to 50,000 and some change. And then you add that extra 125, or was it 115? I believe it's 125. Yes, 125%, that's over 100,000 damage. So with with that combination, you know, Storm Drake is going to deal a massive amount of damage against them. But... But the um, the difficult part is getting Storm Drake to white pretty quickly without starting energy. So that's why I put Dragon Slayer in there so she can get off a lot quicker. 
I put ninja in there because my ninja I have set up to do a lot of um to do a lot of bashing damage and my ninja has actually been showing a lot more promise lately that I changed him to get more bashing damage. But also, you know, everybody loves his energy stealing that he does on his green skill. Because, I mean, you know, when, once you're draining energy, it's over for a lot of these heroes. Here is what it looks like. It steals 550 energy for every hit. So without further ado, that's a good idea for the setting up your defenses. Always remember when you're setting up your defense, take a look at that war modifier. Many of them are really great modifiers. An example is Pompeii, which is boosting fire damage. Um, Iron Armor here is also a good one. Another big one, shoot, I don't remember the name of it. But basically it's boost fury on all your heroes by a lot. This may, that makes your a lot of your main tanks to be really hard to destroy in your battles. All right, so now when you're looking at attacks, oh, it looks like somebody charged that lineup. Anyway, anyways, when you're looking at your attacks, you want to look at you know for example shaman in that line, well to at least hold off on shaman getting those guys all that energy right away is to use your void same thing for dungeon man now dungeon man when he's in your war defense on a normal attack he's not going to give that extra um that extra 310 plus energy to your tunes what d man will do though once he's charged like you see now d man will actually work with that it, all those guys all now have an extra 300 when you go into there. I mean, they're all solid bars except for Ninja, but once, once you know, that war starts, it's pretty much a fight pit battle, you know, except that's an overcharge. Somebody's currently attacking him. All right, so anyways, when I'm going to get my attacks in, well, I guess I can take a look at that. You know, I'm looking at a Dragon Slayer, so there's no energy stealing that you can do. You know, you got to basically hurry up and get in there and use your whites as quickly as you can. Now, Ninja is the second in line and doesn't have a full energy charge. Shaman does have an energy charge. So a good idea to go into a line like that would be to set up... There's no energy drainers except for Ninja after he uses green skill. So any of your starting energy tunes will work. What you want to do is get that front... As close to the front, get a wolf... Once you use your put your wolf in that line, then wolf will be able to wipe out all those whites pretty much. I mean, they'll all try to attempt to use their white skill, but it, all it'll do is just drain their energy. So that's going to be a great thing to use. And then it really turns into a basic battle. Another thing to throw in there is your moon drake. And on a normal charged line like that, you will want to use your bone dragon against. That'll take out. Oh, there goes there goes that line. The war is done now. So, when you're using your attacks, there are three key heroes that I usually look at for attacks. One being my one being my dust devil, because dust devil will boost a select few heroes with their damage. Such as Wee Witch, Storm Drake, Dungeon Man, and also Spirit Wolf. And I'm not it's not clear on who else that he will boost to get those whites off, but basically Wee Witch is a big pair to go with Dust. It'll just do a team wipe, basically. It's I mean, Burrow and DH shields will barely hold up against that on high HP heroes. I think I discussed that before in my previous video. Without further ado, another one is Spirit Wolf. If you're going against a plant line or a spec line, spectral Drake, um, Spirit Wolf will, you know, render their whites useless. So that's another good thing. Um, Dracul is another good one that Wolf will work against. I mean, her, her white skill will do eight seconds. It's not affected by, you know, tenacity either. So that's also a plus. It's straight, flat, 8 seconds. It's always going to be 8 seconds. And then the third hero that I deem very important for war attacks is Medusa. You know, she will 
she will freeze all of them. Another thing is her overcharge. So that way, against a bone dragon line, all your tunes will be charged up. She'll freeze them, and your tunes will be charged and ready to go. So Medusa against bone dragon lines 99% of the time. The only, that 1% is for when it's a charged bone dragon line. Then you'll bring out your bone dragon. Unless it's a D-Slayer line, then you try to bring out your wolf. to. If your wolf is equipped with massive starting energy and movement speed, that is. Then she can get to that line and freeze all those other guys up really quick. Um, another good pair for offense, but not my three key heroes, is a Revenant and a Dwarven Archer. A Dwarven Archer or a Barbarian. Because what Revenant does, when he uses his white skill, he will gain... 89,000 bonus to all their basic attacks. 89,000. It's it'll last for 20 sec or 10 seconds, but the fact of the matter is, you know, your dwarven archer that you cherish so much or your barbarian that you cherish so much will now do an extra 80,000 to that basic attack. I mean, you're it's nearly 100,000 on those attacks. So they will clear out that clear out that line very very quickly. <laughs> Also, another, you know, more popular one is using your Dark Chakul with, not only using it with Shaman, but also using it with Hydra, because Hydra's legendary skill boosts in the DOT. Usually, my when I bring my Dark Chakul and my Cyclops Shaman into a line with Hydra, um, I can clear it. In a matter of, you know, four seconds into the battle, you know, soon it, it, it basically, until they get out to their, to their spot in the line is how long it'll take. I mean, they're doing 40k per shot with Hydra on that offense. Usually because once at 08, Dark Takul is impale, if you look at that 30,000, that's a 60,000 crit. Against those minions on that first line in the war... You know, Dark to Cool will take him out very, very quickly. So it's nice to throw a Shaman in there to try to give him a little extra of energy. And also, I usually pair them up with Medusa, too, so they get that overcharge. That's a little extra insurance, I guess I could say. <clears throat> so a good set of three damaging heroes is, you know, Wee Witch and Dust. That's an instant gone. Um, uh, throwing a Wolf. Usually what I'll do with Wolf is I'll throw Wolf, I'll throw Revenant, and I'll throw Archer because Archer is still doing some damage. I mean, she's doing almost 100,000 per shot, but also, you know, there's always that chance. You, you know, let's say you're going up against a plant, so Lion and Plant jumps right on the lowest health hero right away, and it's, it seems like a lot of times that that ends up being Dracul, and once Dracul over White's on the energy enemy team, since most of the times he's paired up with Hydra, that's almost an instant team wipe i mean you know you look at archer's health and her health's not the greatest it's sick barely under sixty thousand. that's not too much but yes usually i'll play her wolf revenant and dart archer and that'll be a, a lot of damage there too um moon drake is another good one to throw in especially with like a we wish dust line where you can have we wish keep going and going and going once moon drake procs her radiant flux and basically, other than that, you know, you might see the current meta of tunes in a defensive line, Dragon Slayer, Wolf. For some reason, some people still throw Dungeon Man in their Kali defenses, or I mean in their war defenses for, you know, his because of his skill. I mean, I can understand when you throw that skill in there, you know, a lot of people are going to think about that. I don't understand why he doesn't do it. I guess it's because of the first wave, you know. But, you know, he's not going to work in your war defenses. Anyways, um, he's going to throw a D-Slayer. You're going to throw a Wolf because they got her loaded up with, with starting energy. A Shaman and a Moondrake. You know, that's going to get still get her going pretty quickly. So, you know, a good thing to do is throw your fully charged Wolf in against him. But there you go. There's a basic guide on war attacks, war defenses. But rest, remember, very importantly, look at that battlefield. That battlefield can help you out. Some of them aren't that great, like the 
water damage or the water buff all it does is just give your water heroes an extra 15 percent health and that's not really going to do it but there you go i hope you guys uh you know take this advice you know start doing better in war or even fine tuning what has already been great for you so far you know it's always good to ensure that you know you're going to win those war attacks a lot of guilds nowadays require war as a main standard thing you want them to be higher in ranks on there so take this advice leave it you know i'm just trying to help you guys out for the war but thank you very much for uh watching my video like comment subscribe whatever you need to do to help me get my message across and help others grow thank you very much have a good day